الحمد لله الحمد لله مجيب الدعوات ومجزل العطايا والهبات وينزل الرحمات أحمده تعالى وأشكره وأثني عليه وأستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله حق التقوى واعلموا أن ليلة القدر يفتح فيه الباب يفتح فيه الباب ويسمى الخطاب فاجتهدوا رحمكم الله في طلبها واحذروا من ضياعها ربنا نسيت الله سبحانه وتعالى existed when nothing else existed he then created the pen. He told the pen to write. The pen said, what shall I write? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, write everything that is going to occur until your muqiyama. And this is stored in a book which is known as the preserved tablet, al lohil mahfuz Which means, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing that's going to exist. There's nothing that is going to happen from the creation until your muqiyama, except that it is preserved in the mother of all books. And it is from this book, my brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angels to descend on an annual basis to transfer information from that mother of all books to your own personal book for what is going to occur in the coming year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَمْهُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will transfer information from that book, he will leave certain things, and he will change, he will change certain things. Mujahid ibn Jabbar, rahimahullah, the student of Ibn Abbas, he said, يقضي في ليلة القدر, on the night of Qadr, ما يكون في السنة من رزق أو مصيبة. Everything that is going to occur in your life, everything that is going to occur in your life, from risk, from events, is transferred from the mother of all books to your own personal book of decrees of the events that are going to take place in the coming year. ثُمَّ يُقَدِّمْ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُؤَخِّرْ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels to descend with this command and there is nothing on earth except that the angels descend with a great descent and there is nothing on earth except the angels outnumber that thing. For what purpose? To transfer that information from the mother of all books to your own personal book of decrees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command them to change certain things and to leave certain things. My brothers and sisters, Laylatul Qadr is not only a night of decree, a night of events, but it's also a night of hidayah. As this information is being transferred from the Lawh al-Mahfuz, from the preserved tablet to your own book of decrees, it is possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commands the angels to write down hidayah for this person, which probably before hadn't been willed for this person. So once you have a person, and we have witnessed this ourselves, is sinful before Ramadan, after Laylatul Qadr where he stood and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this person's life has been completely transformed because of this transfer of information from the Lawh al-Mahfuz to his own personal book Ibn Abbas he says on the night of Laylatul Qadr all of the doors of the heavens are made wide open why? Because of your du'a to enter through them, because of your worship to enter through them, your salah to enter through them, your Qur'an and your dhikr to enter through them, وَتُخْبَلْ فِيهِ التَّوْبَةِ مِنْ كُلِّ تَعِبْ And your tawbah to enter through them. He said, Ibn Abbas, that there is no person who makes tawbah on the night of Qadr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it, except that that person's repentance will be accepted, and because of the magnitude of this night, this person's life is completely transformed. 
فبدأ نسيس لذا بابي صلى الله عليه وسلم سألنا حديث نسيح البخاري انتمسوها في أشر الأواخر من رمضان Seek later to Qadr in the last ten nights not one particular night every single one of them in another version he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لثالثة تبقى Seek it in the remaining three nights 27 28 29 or 28, 29, 30 in another hadith the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith which has been made Hassan by Shaykh Rabani, Innaha Layla Sabi'a Autasi'a wa Ishreen. Surely Laylatul Qadr is on the 27th night or the 29th night, which is tonight. He went on to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Malaika fi tilka Layla, the Malaika on that night, on earth, Akthar min Adil al Hasa will outnumber the number of pebbles that you find on the face of this earth. But then we have another report. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is made Sahih by Shaykh Rabani, Iltamisuha, seek Laylatul Qadr fi akhir layla min Ramadan, on the last night, final night of Ramadan, which also could be tonight. The 29th night, it could be the last night, and in these hadith we learn that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that Laylatul Qadr is still possibly yet to occur. If this is the case, my brothers and sisters, and we have very little time left in this month, what is it that we can do? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to combine in his nights the recitation of the Qur'an, making dhikr of Allah, making dua and istighfar. And the best thing that a person can do is if he can combine all of these things, Qur'an, dhikr, istighfar, dua, whilst he is standing in tahajjud, then this is the sunnah. Ubay bin Ka'b radiallahu anhu said, Amarana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi qiyamiha. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us, the companions, to stand and make tahajjud during this night. My brothers and sisters, there's only little time left. But don't overlook, don't overlook any good deed. Ibrahim al nakhai one of the tabi'een, student of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said, Al-amal fiha, a good deed on Laylatul Qadr, khayrun min amal fi alfi shahr siwaha. If a person does a good deed and it happens to be Laylatul Qadr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted it, it is better than this person doing it repeatedly had he lived for a thousand months, 83 years. Imagine, my brothers and sisters, you pray two raka'at, you pray four raka'at, you pray eight raka'at, it has taken you an hour, it has taken you two hours. But in your book of decree, in the book of transfer, it is written that you have stood for 83 years. Imagine, my brothers and sisters, you have recited the Qur'an for a number of minutes. And it is possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you meet him yawm al-qiyamah, has written for you that you are reciting the Qur'an on this night for 83 years. Hence the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in talking about the importance and the reward and the magnitude of this night. Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. Anyone who is prevented from any kind of goodness on this night, then surely this person is a destitute person. This person has nothing good in himself to offer. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare for the month to finish, it is easy for us to forget that there is still a lot of goodness left. The Laylatul Qadr may still yet to occur. And Laylatul Qadr, my brothers and sisters, is a night too powerful for us to control. We can really not understand the magnitude of this night and the things that are happening above us and around us. But the thing that we can control is to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the goodness that we have in ourselves. That we seek His pardon. We seek his afu, we seek his mercy, and he is a gracious master, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as our decree is being written for the forthcoming year of hidayah and health and wealth, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has mercy on us whilst this transfer is happening. Man kana yuridu al-izza, falillahi al-izza tu jami'a, ilayhi yas'alu kalim tayyib, wal-amalu salih yarfa'u. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات وذكر الحكيم أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو غفور رحيم
الحمد لله الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وعلى آله وأصحابه وأعوانه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد ما بذن السيستز إيد is upon us and the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to explain to his companions the rulings and the etiquettes of Eid before the day of Eid. So firstly, my brothers and sisters, it is important for us to understand that Zakat al-Fitr is wajib upon every single one of us. Every single one of us in our household, they have to give the Zakat al-Fitr. Adults, children, male, female. And the Prophet ﷺ commanded that they give raw, uncooked, staple food with a measurement of a sa'a. Now the ulama have explained a sa'a is equivalent to three kilograms and the majority of the ulama from the madhahib have said that it is makruh for a person to transfer this zakat or fitr to another place. Therefore it is upon us if we are able to look for a poor person, a needy person and give them three kilograms of staple food which will benefit them on the day of Eid. If this is not possible, if this is difficult, then it is permissible for a person to give the money to an agent and that agent must make sure that the zakat or fitr has been given and distributed before the day of Eid. Another misconception from the ahkam of zakat or fitr, some people feel that they can give money and the zakat or fitr has been completed. This is not correct. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, commanded the companions to give sa' min ta'an. It has to be a measurement of food that is given to the poor and the needy. Therefore, if you leave it too late and you give money, it might not be that the zakat al-fitr is distributed and the food is given to the poor and needy before the day of Eid. Also from the rulings of Eid, is that when you know that the next day is going to be Eid, from Salat al-Maghrib, from the last night that you have fasted, it becomes then recommended for men and women to make takbir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْإِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَا هَدَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for you to fast a whole month, qiyam, a whole month, doing good deeds, for a whole month, therefore make takbir of him. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. The companions used to do this in an audible manner, in private and in public, and it is recommended for women to do it in a lower manner, with a low voice, again in private and in public. From the rulings of Eid itself, brothers and sisters, it is recommended for a person to make ghusl on that day, to apply perfume, to dress nicely, and it was from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to show happiness. The narrations say that he used to come out with his family وسلم, and he used to walk to the direction of the prayer place and he used to walk with his family, showing happiness, making takbir. And then he used to walk home in another manner, in another direction, again showing happiness, and again greeting people. So from the ahkam of Eid is that you are pleasant internally, and you show joy externally. Also from the sunnah of Eid, my brothers and sisters, is to eat something light, to signify the fitr, before the Eid Salat. The Messenger of Allah used to eat an odd number of dates, or anything similar to this will also suffice. My brothers and sisters, Islam teaches us to respect our guests. It is a sign of Iman to respect your guest. How about if your guest is Ramadan? Be kind to Ramadan. Don't miss it before it is gone because you might not ever see it again. Allah sallu wa sallim wa rahimakum Allah ala imam al-sa'imin wa qudbut al-qa'imin qala ta'ala inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zil wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma izz al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma izz al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma izz al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikin wa dhammir ad-da'atin ya rabbal alameen Allahumma aslih ahwal al-muslimin fi kulli makan اللهم أسلح وعلى المسلمين في مسجد الأقصى في يمن وشام وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم نسلك الجنة اللهم إننا نسلك الجنة 
اللهم إن نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم نعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل اللهم إنك عفو تهب العفو فأفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو تهب العفو فأفو عنا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اقتهم لنا رمضان بقبول والردوان يا رب العالمين اللهم اللهم عيد علينا رمضان عديلا ونحن على خير يا رب العالمين اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين